I have I have one question. Yes, okay. go ahead. This, this is David. This is Rhea from Denver. We spoke earlier. Hi, Rhea. I'm I'm inter I'm in, hi. How are you? I'm interested in hearing from Dr. Rice that he's talked about the various surgeries and and the treatments after and before. What about the quality of life of these patients for the remainder of 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 their life? That's a great question, Rio. Did he notice? Did did you is their quality of life diminished, or is it uh, is the is their quality of life better for the time that they did survive, making the surgeries um, worthwhile, so to speak? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, Rhea. Every patient is different. Um, some people we actually operate on because they're having a miserable quality of life. They're having chest wall pain or they're having such shortness of breath because their lung has collapsed and they, they have this physiological shunting going on um, mm -hmm. where they're getting deoxygenated blood back into the bloodstream. Uh, and sometimes those patients actually will be made better by an operation. In general, Pleurectomy decortication causes less of an, Im of an impact on, on somebody's quality of life than extrapleural pleural for obvious reasons. I mean, they have two lungs left. The, the, co the course of therapy for an extrapleural pleural followed by radiation, followed by chemotherapy, in general takes about six months. And it's been my experience that most people take another six months to, to really start forgetting that they've had an operation. Most people, after you take their lung out and do all that, um, are able to get back to, to a reasonable quality of life, but I would say that, that, that they have you know, limitations in, in terms of what, what exercise they can do, and, 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 and most people can do activities of daily living, but uh, it, it is a, you know, it's a, it, it's a trade-off. You, you trade having two lungs to going to life with one lung but hopefully no tumor. Right, okay. And, and you know, every patient has a different value system as to what they value, what they value more. You know, a lot, patients will sometimes come to me and say, look, I just want quality of life. I don't care if it's an extra 12 months or 16 months or whatever. Um, others will say, you know, I want to be aggressive at all costs and it doesn't matter. I, I just want to get as much life as I possibly can. But, but to, I mean, in, in a nutshell, extrapleural in my experience, generally does limit quality of life after, after surgery. Um, pleurectomy decortication, okay. significantly less so. Okay. And then could I ask one more about the talc? Yes. The sure. Um, I, I, I am a meso patient, I am a mesothelioma patient. Um, I've had people tell me, not my doctor, have asked me, well, are they going to try talc? And he says, uh, my oncologist says, uh, no, he, because with mine, uh, it has no chest wall invasion nor lung invasion. It is strictly confined now still to the lining. Mm -hmm. So the, you know, they're floating, the tumors have reduced. Mm -hmm. um, what what is your your true opinion about about plural you know cal pleurodesis for maybe someone like me or or I'm a fairly young um, healthy prior to this. Well, I would say that that if you've made the decision not to to pursue an aggressive approach to this and you're planning on just getting treatment with chemotherapy and you're not interested in a more major surgery, then then certainly um, uh, that would depend on the extent of your tumor. If you have one of those tumors that, that it's predominantly fluid buildup in your chest that's your main issue and you don't have a lot of tumor that's, that's entrapping or encasing the lung, then there's a pretty good chance that if you drain that fluid off that your lung will re-expand and you'll be less short of breath. And certainly in that situation, talc pleurodesis will work about 80% of the time. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. It involves a, well, the way I do it, it involves a, a short hospital stay. Um, we, we would put you asleep, put a very small, a single small incision in your chest, suck out all of the fluid, take a look around. Um, 
and then instill the talcum powder in there and put a tube in your chest. And most people keep the tube in for about 48 to, to 72 hours, and then, they, then we take the tube out and, uh, and you're good to go. It doesn't work 100%. And, and the, the uh -huh. for whatever reasons, it, it works, talc works by causing an inflammatory reaction between the, the lining of the lung and the lining of the chest wall. And that inflammation causes scarring. And when you get scarring, it, it's like a, a weld. It's almost like the lung is sort of fused up against the chest wall. It gets rid of the, of the space. For that to happen, you have to have a lung that's able to expand and actually reach the chest wall. So if you've got a lung that's been compressed by, by a rind of tumor, no matter what you do, unless you remove that tumor, you may never get full expansion of that lung. Does that make sense? It does. It does. So far, um, by removing fluid, I have uh, my last test can. Um, my tumors have have um, reduced remarkably, mm -hmm. and there's been uh, I have just a little fluid. It has stayed at that that level for several several months now. Good. But Good. the reason I ask about the talc too is because I work for an international mining company who mm. mines talc. Ah. And so I get that question, too. Well, uh, you know, it's impossible for me to tell you to make a, a, a patient care decision right. uh, by telephone, essentially. So, uh, right. you, you know, I mean, if you want to send, um, if you want to correspond with me, you can reach me through the MD Anderson website, and I'd be happy to take a look at your films and, um, and review your studies and give you a, a more educated opinion. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for answering my questions. I Not at all. It.